Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we are looking at the Viva New Vegas mod list, released for Fallout New Vegas, created by Kolor and adapted for Wabberjack by T Dark Shadow. The version I've been playing on is version 1.2.9, released mid 2021. You can check on the Viva New Vegas Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Viva New Vegas? The description reads, Viva New Vegas is a light mod list that tries to stay as close as possible to vanilla, but fixes as many bugs as possible, optimises the performance, and adds in some quality of life features without being intrusive. Viva New Vegas is available to download from the Wabberjack mod list installer, and manually from the Viva New Vegas website. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this video, the installation was incredibly easy, with clear instructions provided. You can follow along my Wabberjack explanation guide video on my channel and linked below. With around 60 mods, this list is very light and quick to install, which is a nice change of pace compared to most mod lists. Once installed, this list requires minimal tweaks to get up and running, so you can install and get into the game incredibly fast. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list, and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. Usually I'll tackle the graphics first, however if you've tried playing Fallout New Vegas on PC as of late, you'll know that the game doesn't work well. It usually varies system to system, but the game is often plagued with crashes, freezes, stuttering, and all manner of bugs which is a real shame considering how great the game is. Now, I can honestly say, using the Viva New Vegas mod list has been the smoothest experience I've ever had playing this game. With my many hours of playtime, I've not encountered any performance problems, and bugs have been minimal, and all that with an uncapped frame rate. This list clearly has a focus on polishing the base game, and as a wise man once said, All of this just works. As you can probably see, this list doesn't look crazily different from Vanilla New Vegas. However, there are still a number of graphical tweaks made, which definitely make the game feel less dated than usual. Though, I think I should get this out of the way as it's the first thing I noticed, and it's that there are no texture mods added for landscape and general items. Now usually, that would be a big turn off for me, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually didn't mind. It was really noticeable at first, but I got used to it pretty quick. Now, the list author has given reasons for not including texture mods, saying that they'll often cause stuttering and jarring texture transitions as seen here, though I will get into installing texture mods in the add-on section of this video. But as for what has been added, a number of NPC faces have been improved, distant LODs have had an increased resolution, and the interior lighting has been made to feel much more natural. The weather mod Altitude has also been added, which vastly improves the look of the outdoors while keeping with the clean desert sky look of the vanilla game. While there's not a huge list of graphics mods, this list really does show how much of a difference better lighting makes to a game. For such a small list, there's actually a decent amount of changes made to the gameplay. One of the key mods added is J Sawyer Ultimate Edition, which is an updated version of the original J Sawyer mod. For those unaware, Joshua Sawyer was the lead designer and project director of Fallout New Vegas, and this mod that he released offers a large rebalance to many aspects of the game, which never made it to the final cut. There's a whole wiki dedicated to everything it changes, but just to name some more notable tweaks, the level cap is reduced from 50 to 35, and the amount of XP required to level up is increased by 33%, your base health is now lower, and the health gained per point of endurance is reduced, carry rate is significantly lowered, Various perks have had their requirements and effects tweaked, and a huge list of weapons, armours, and general items have had their stats adjusted for better balance. As you may have noticed, most of these changes make the game more difficult, which may not be to your liking, but for me personally, I think the difficulty perfectly fits into the game. As you know, you are trying to survive in the post-apocalypse and all, though if it's not for you, there is an option to play without these mods. For other notable mods, the Just Loot Menu mod adds a more modern Bethesda style of looting, where you don't have to open the loot menu every time. Also the mod's complex vendors and economy overhaul have been added, which balance and improve trading. Vendors now only buy items related to their profession, 
and rarer items generally cost more, as usually you end up with an abundance of caps when you get to the mid-game. Overall, most of the gameplay changes make New Vegas into a more balanced RPG, and while they might not be very large and flashy mods, they all fit naturally, to the point where I actually thought many of the changes were already in the base game because of just how well they fit. Much like the gameplay, the combat in Viva New Vegas doesn't completely change things up, but instead aims to improve what was given. Mods like Real Recoil help modernise the combat with recoil that you can actually control, rather than bullets spraying randomly everywhere. And fitting with this, the mods Anniversary and Impact and B42 Weapon Inertia adds a bunch of new weapon animations and camera movements when firing. Other than this, there are a bunch of more subtle combat tweaks which all add up, mainly from the J Sawyer mod. Weapons break less often, some weapon projectiles fly faster, and the choice of weapon against armoured enemies is much more important. While the combat will never be quite how it is in Fallout 4 or more modern RPGs, it still plays much better than vanilla, with a big focus on how the weapons feel to hold and fire. Fallout New Vegas has a lot of interesting details about its release, and it's known that a decent amount of content was removed from the game for various reasons, such as time restrictions and console performance. But this mod list adds a number of mods which restores the content, so not only is there more stuff to do and look at, but it all fits perfectly into the world because it was meant to be there all along. Uncut Wasteland adds a bunch of scenery and clutter all over the Mojave, making it feel more detailed and lived in. And the Living Desert adds hundreds of NPCs and scripted events back into the world, which react to the choices you make. More or less travellers will walk the roads depending on how dangerous it is, some groups and towns may send tired thugs after you, and much more. It's worth noting that no large quest mods have been added, as the focus for this list is to enhance what has already been given. Though there is the odd bit of new content here and there, like the new mobile truck base added that you can purchase. Aside from fixing some odd and annoying sounds, no new audio has been added into the list. I personally didn't find it that big a deal, though I will discuss this more in the add-ons section. And the same goes for new items, there are no new weapons or armours added, as the focus is to improve the ones already in game. Though again, I didn't really notice because New Vegas already has a bunch of weapons compared to other Fallout titles. For some other notable things with the list, the UI in HUD has been adjusted to look cleaner and more organised, also with an increased resolution. The mod Marathoner increases the player movement speed when out of combat, which is a personal preference thing, as I found it to be a little too fast myself, but it's easy enough to switch off if it's not for you. Better character creation speeds up the process and makes it much easier, including the option to enable Wild Wasteland without having to take it as a trait. And finally, you can now have multiple followers depending on your charisma stat, with max charisma allowing up to 5 followers, and 1 charisma not allowing any. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding, and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. Thankfully, the New Vegas website has a list of mods to avoid, which really comes in handy. If you decide you want texture mods, it's recommended you use the low resolution options, as higher quality usually creates stuttering and frame dips. If you're looking for new weapons, there's quite a few to avoid as they often cause conflicts, but some mods like Fallout 3 weapons can be added. And as for adding new audio, I can't say for sure, but smaller sound mods that improve stuff like bullet and footstep audio should probably be fine. If you read through the mods to avoid page, you'll get a good idea what you can and can't add to this list. Overall, I found this list really refreshing to play, as it's been so long since I've been able to play New Vegas without any issue. And don't let the relatively small size of this list fool you. While this list doesn't completely change things up, I feel it does just enough to make the game a much better and balanced experience than vanilla, and feel much more modernised, in a good way. If you've played New Vegas a bunch and looking for a new experience, then this list probably isn't the one for you. But if it's been a while, or you're just wanting to play a smooth experience with the game, or even never played the game at all, then I'll definitely give this list a try. 
I can safely say it's reminded me why I love this game so much, and would spend all day playing it on my terrible laptop many years ago. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow. I also have a Twitch where I'll sometimes stream my testing of mod lists, and a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Jack Ma, Michael Eric, Nicholas J, and Christian Howell, you're really helping me out here. Thank you and farewell.